So we have learned that English language has become global language. And in near, in near future, there is no possibility of losing this status. And as we have learned that if USA changes its position towards English language, then there might be a problematic situation regarding the status of global language. And also the economic and political supremacy handed over from USA to other countries that that language will come forward. But we haven't seen such kind of indication in near future. So let's move in this regard. What will be the characteristics of English language next time we will be discussing in these chapters. Um, here, Salman Ruti in an essay, he has commented that English literature doesn't exist. The English language ceased to be the sole position of the English some time ago. Indeed, when the largest English speaking nation, the USA, turns out we have only about 20% of the world English speakers, it is plain that no one can now claim sole ownership. It means that USA is the largest English speaking country. But English speaking people nowadays is spread all over the world. So USA only consists 20% of English language users. So if it is so that who are the owners of English language? It cannot be claimed at present. That means English language has become a language of Asia, Africa, Australia, and all other continents. So there is a loss of ownership of English language. In this regard, there is probably the best way of defining a genuinely global language and that English language as well. And that its uses is not restricted by countries and by governing bodies. The loss of ownership is of course uncomfortable to those, especially in Britain, who feel that the language is theirs by historical right, and they have no alternative. And there is no way in which any kind of regional social movement, such as the Buddhist societies, which try to prevent language change and restore a past period of emerging linguistic excellence can influence the global outcome. In the end, it comes down to population growth. In the list of English speaking countries shown in chapter two, the number of first language speakers in the inner circle, that means the countries currently about the first language, same as the number of the second language. The English speakers in the outer circle countries, nearly 400 million. But as we have seen, the countries of outer circle combined a much greater growth rate of those of the inner circle. So we have understood that inner circle, that means they use English language as the first, circle, first language, but the outer circle who use English language as second language or international language or foreign language. But the population growth of the countries where English language is used as foreign or second language, their population growth is much larger than that of USA or UK. So the current population and the learning trends continue. The balance of a speaker will change dramatically. There are probably nearly more L2 speakers than L1 speakers. And within 50 years, there could be some up to 50% more by this time, the only possible concept of ownership will be the global one. So the English language is no longer a language of UK, is no longer a language of USA. English language has become a global language at present. That it is very painful. So English language has lost its, uh, its ownership 
and in English language has become a global language. And uh, in case of English language users, especially in India, the population has doubled since 1960 and passed a thousand million in 1999. In the, it is the second most populi, populous country in the world after China, but its population growth rate is larger than China's. Even at the lawyer estimate reported, there are now almost as many speakers of English in India as there are in England. At the higher estimate, there are six times as many. If current English language learning trends continue with satellite television and other sources of English increasingly available, it looks as if they will. This differential will continue to widen. So India consists a large number of English speaking countries. An inevitable consequence of this development in that, that language will become open to wind, winds of linguistic change and in totally unpredictable ways. That means the second language users of English, that means English is used as a second language. Now the population of uh, population who use English as the second language, the number of such kind of population is larger than the first language. So the linguistic change might occur. And that language that will be used by the people whose language is not uh, first language or mother tongue, that kind of language is called new English. So we will be uh, discussing the characteristics of the new English. The spread of English around the world has already demonstrated this, that the emergence of new varieties of English in the different territories where the language has taken root. So the, in several regions of this world, new English will be used. It is an English language, but not like as similar as the UK English or the US English. The change has become a major talking point only since the 1960s decades, hence the term by which these varieties are often known new English. So new English uh, student asks at the initial stage of this class that why it is plural. That means this new English is not only the Indian variety, it might be the African variety, it might be the Asian variety, it might be the Australian variety, several varieties of English language will come forward. And such kind of varieties are called new English. The different dialects of British and American English provide the most familiar examples. I would have, we have discussed this issue earlier. Even, even I can discuss some more in this class as well, that is in the UK. Uh, the Scottish English, the Irish English, the Welsh English are not as the standard English, standard, standard UK English. Even in America, in several parts, the English language is used that are not the standard American English. So these are the differences. The two varieties diverse almost as soon as the first settlers arrived in Africa. By the time Noah Auguster Webster was writing his dictionaries and there were hundreds hundreds of words which were known the USA but not in Britain. So we know the difference between British English and African English. Britain have their new word uh, for a new English and uh, a word different from the American English for a same thing. Pronunciation had begun to diverse quite markedly and spelling were in the process of change. Today, there are thousands of differences between British and American English. Two countries, as George Bernard Shaw once put it, divided by a common language. So USA and UK, the people, they use the same language, but in many ways, American English is different from UK English. 
in the USA, a concern to develop a distinct American standard was prominent in Webster's thinking. He presented the case strongly in his dissertation on the English language. It also partly a matter of honor as an independent nation to have system of their own in a language as well as government. It is partly a matter of common sense because of England, the text of her writers is already corrupted and her language uh, on the decline. It was partly a matter of practicality, England being too great a distance to be uh, our model. So why we see the difference between American and the British English. The national or the federal language was inevitable for this thought because the exploration of the new continent would bring many new words into the language and which Britain would not share, but it is also needed for studying. So in this of the colonial role of English language, also we see different word is included in English vocabulary. Okay, however, the UK do not share this as their own word. A spelling leap form, he concluded, would be a major scene that reaction, a difference between the English orthography and the American, it is an object of vast political consequence. He is right. Language and political issues are always very closely connected as we have seen in the earlier chapter. So this is the scenario. Sir, may I uh, know, sir, one issue? The writers are corrupted. Um, what is the meaning of writers are corrupted? in the previous space uh, actually they mean that actually the uh, american uh, writer yes, thought, uh, the, uh, the yes. thought, yeah the partly matter of the yeah. common sense because the english yeah. because in england england the taste of her writers is already corrupted and her language on the decline actually after getting independent america wanted that their english is different from uk and in this regard um, the web is coming the American uh, scholar, he said that actually their language has declined and the way the writer, that means the UK writer is um, trying to convey their message, he is not as similar as American. So that is the opposite. Uh, uh, so uh, already corrupted is not in a very negative sense, but in a alternative way. Alternative way, yes, sir. Now I, I understand. That is Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. They have been uh, here, the forces which shaped the development of American English are many and various. They have been well summarized the US dialectical Frederick, uh, the effect of the revolution of the national independence of the trade and So we have got the issue how the American English is different from the uh, UK English. The search of population westward and the phenomenon of the expanding frontiers in which the distinct and the standard of more settled society were thrown off were reflected in the language. So in case of USA, more uh, diverse ethnic group we see in USA. So the language is also very um, different from the UK variant. In the East, in the cities, however, education flourished. The leading class had it. It became national idea. The mark of progress in many settlements was that the school had been started. Self-education also. So in America, we see a different language. In the East of countries, we see a different English language. And even some people have learned English language in their own way. That can be the self-education, especially for talented people of humble beginnings will widely practice and admire. So the people, they have learned English on their way. Either they are not maintaining their standard. They actually, they are maintaining a uh, standard variation of in pronunciation uh, in English language. Public address often learned in the school of hard knocks carried to the people educational ideas and their uh, 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 kudos. Some of their interesting uh, neologi neologism were the direct offspring of the ignorance pretending to be learned. A whole school of humor portrayed in characteristics as unschooled but practically wise. So the English language is spirited in such a way in every parts of this work. Uh, this kind of humorous writing cannot work unless people can use it as a joke. 
In other words, they must be able to recognize the spelling of a non-standard and be able to identify, di di identify dialect grammar and vocabulary. Webster was 60 when Billing was born. Eventually, in a quite short time, American English had settled down in a new identity. And despite its dialect differences are capable of providing a unified literary standard which the new nation was able to recognize to which it could dispense. Many distinctive forms also identify the Englishes of the other countries in the inner circle. Australian English, New Zealand English, Canadian English, South African English, Caribbean English, within Britain, Irish, Scots, and Wales English. So still, we see some kind of variation of standard English, English, English speaking country. Among the countries of the outer circle, that means India, Singapore, like that, several varieties have been grown in distinctive in recent decades. As we have seen, uh, there is a one group in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and often collectively called and South Asian English. So apart from this variation, we get another variation of English language that is called South Asian English. That means the English used by India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. There are another group in the former British colonies in the West Africa, and the further group in former British colonies in the West Africa. So apart from this variation, other group we see in African continents. Other emerging varieties have been noted in Caribbean and the past of Southeast Asia, such as Singapore. So these are the variations we see in case of English language. These new Englishes are somewhat like the dialects as all recognized within our own country, except that they are on an international scale, applying to whole countries or regions. Instead of affecting more thousands of speakers, it is typically can see uh, case with rural or urban, uh, or urban regional dialects, they apply to millions. They are an inhabitable consequence of the speed of English on a wide scale. So the study of the language history shows that if two social groups come to be separated only by mountain range or the wide river, they will soon begin to develop different habits of speech. So even in a country, if some people live one side and another side, they might be speaking in English. Even within the Asian English variant, we see a different pronunciation pattern. Dialect immerse because they give identity to the groups of their own. So in language, some kind of dialect emerge. And this difference becomes especially noticeable in, in, in informal settings. For example, they are currently well represented in the discussion groups in the internet, as you see in the internet. International varieties thus express national identities and are a way reducing the conflict between intelligibility and identity. Because a speaker from a country A is using English, there is an intelligibility bond with an English speaker of the country of B. Suppose if an Asian speaks in English language, that English may not be understood by an English speaking speakers from Europe. That is the variant. On the other hand, a speaker A is not using exactly the same way as speaking the speaker B. We are speaking English, but that English may not be understood by some English speaking speaker. And in another way, having our cake and eating it. The drive for identity was particularly dominant in the second half of the 20th century, when the number of independent nations dramatically grew and the membership of the United Nations more than tripled. So it is difficult to show how many new Englishes evolved as a consequence. So at present, we have got so many variations of English language. That is American English, Australian English, Canadian English, New Zealand English, African English, apart from that South African English, South Asian English, Caribbean English. So these are the variants. But the writer also suggests that, also predicts that how many kinds of English language will be emerging next time we can think, especially all people of the world are speaking English in a way that English is not similar to the standard English. However, this is the English language. And so many variations of English languages are called English or called New Englishes. In Nigeria, 
for example there are some 500 languages to choose from is with its same ethnic roots so if the nigerian people the english speaking country but they all speak english but their english is different from the other parts of this world in such a situation only one solution was to keep using the former colonial language which after many decades has become embedded in the fabric of the local institution but the pressure of the linguistic identity is remorseable uh, remorseless and it didn't take long before the official adoption of english led it adoption with new institution came new ways of talking and writing indigenous words became a privilege a locally distinctive mood of expression emerged and in some cases began to be recorded and for in the form of regional dictionary projects so we in case of new english we see the uh, different pronunciation pattern as early as 1967 whitney borton and i was compiling a dictionary of english speaking people uh, for uh, Cecil's a uh, project which began by making contact with the lexicographer working east of the newly independent nations. We received initial headword list from several contributions, some of which has already contained several of the titles. So they have started, they will question and someone started writing the variation of English language. So um, a country's biogeographical uniqueness will generate potentially large number of words for animals fish, birds, insects, plants, trees, rocks, rivers, and so on. So English language is used in, in Bangladesh. But some fishes, you will, uh, some trees in Bangladesh might not have existed in English speaking country. So that kind of English language is used um, uh, in a different way. There will be awards for the food stuffs, drinks, medicine, drugs, and the practices associated with the eating, eating, healthcare, and disease and health. So in the different scenario of different continent, we will have new words in English language. So in such a variety, the English language will have, will have different vocabulary in its use. The country's oral uh, and perhaps also written literature will give rise to the distinctive name of in sagas, poems, oratory, and folk tales also as well. So we see the different words in English language in such a way because um, the globe is consisted of so many countries and the, all the countries are consisted of so many ethnic groups and for this region, English language will be immersed in such a way. So this is the way English language will be used. Some studies are beginning to provide systematically based on the classical of new lexicon such as deco. So in case of new Englishes, the variety will be many and the vocabulary and the other parts will also be many in case of uh, the new Englishes. Let's move on to the characteristics of new Englishes. So the characters, what will be the characteristics of new Englishes? In this regard, we can uh, discuss that already we have learned that the vocabulary of English language will be changed, grammar will be changed. A domain of linguistic structure and the use could be based on the variety uh, and differentiation. But the focus on comparing the traditional standard of British and American English has been almost entirely associated with the vocabulary and phonology. So grammar of new English will be changed from the standard English. And also some uh, 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 look here, a well, a grammatical point has been established here. We will not read in details about this grammar. Uh, so the new English will have new vocabulary as well as the new grammar they will be used. Vocabulary will also be changed in case of new English. Accent will be changed, sir, maybe area to area yeah. accent. Uh, accent, of course, pronunciation will be changed. Uh, uh, of, of course, will be changed. And also, um, syntax or maybe change sir, syntax yes and also code switching uh, code switching code switching with accent intonation rhythm rhythm pattern yes. everything Stress, will be changed. intonation everything yes. will be changed area to area okay so uh, uh, some other so we we can recognize the data of the expect to show the hybridization of english language so that we have got at this point that uh, English language, 
that will emerge in the next time that is called that new english and that new english will be different in vocabulary in structure in grammar in pronunciation pattern in states pattern in formal approach and on uh, and uh, not uh, in in informal approach and everything okay so uh, standard english that we know and also uh, other domain words most most people would accept uh, uh, pike's judgment that english for at least uh, 500 years has been essentially stress based with just occasional use of syllable based school speech but the contact with other languages which is a part of the contact of new english is, is fundamentally changing is this situation the vast majority of these englishes are syllable based as the following observation suggests so um, uh, type b the indian speakers sometimes use pattern of accentuation and are different from the patterns of the native english speakers that uh, that we know that the rhythm is also different from the stress uh, time uh, rhythm of the native english speakers south african black english maintain an unchanging state of syllable utterance so that will also be different and uh whether in the long term stand uh, stress based speech will replace the syllable based speech and vice versa is impossible to say but attention should be paid to the third possibility that the second language learners will become competent uh, com competent in both kinds of speech continuing to use level based speech for local communication as a sign of national identity as a sign of national identity and switching to stage based speech for the international communication as a means of ensuring inter intelligibility so multi dialectism already exist in many social linguistic situation and it would be a natural development for it to eventually incorporate rhythmicality rhythm after all is always present in speech and is therefore much more available as a signal of identity than an individual segmental uh, uh, phoneme uh, nuclear tones lexical items and other putative markers of style whatever its phonetic basis and so social linguistic future is as well so we see that the new english is that is called that apart from the standard american uh, british english all over the globe we will see that a new english will come forward and that english will be different different in grammar structure uh, intonation stress pattern rhythm pattern and everything so thank you very much for attending the class already